your building will not be in Halo Infinite. While this saddens many players, including myself, has it really had the best effect on Halo's sandbox? Well, in this video, we're going to take a good look into that. So stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. So as many of you know, dual wielding would not be coming back in Halo Infinite. According to Twindel Hoyo, who is the sandbox lead, said this about this in a recent Ask343 video. That's not in the cards right now. So whenever you set out to make a game the size of Halo Infinite, there's just so many things you can do. We wanted to really focus down on the weapon, the gunplay, the grenades, melee. Right now, dual wielding isn't necessarily there, but that's because we're trying to focus on everything, on all the other things that we're working on. Now, when first hearing about this news, it saddens me. Yeah, dual wielding is actually kind of fun, but the feature was only ever in Halo 2 and Halo 3. So in this video, I want to take a look at the negatives, the positives, and as well as the road moving forward and the possible balancing we could come up with for Halo Infinite. So if you guys like these analytical kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, Make sure you tap subscribe right there. Let's get right into the content. So in this first section of this video, I want to talk about the positives because there's actually quite a lot of positives that come with dual wielding in Halo. One aspect of it is that it's just kind of cool and really fun to be able to have two weapons in your hand at the same time. There's just something about the Halo 2 cover that just looks really badass compared to the Halo 3 one. It just feels very noble and almost eloquent in a way. And could it just be because the fact that in Halo 2, Master Chief is dual wielding two SMGs? I don't know, but that could be a factor because what's better than one gun well two guns another positive that it allows more unique situations and player creativity to be involved with the gameplay and sandbox as well i'm sure many of us out there in the community have our special little combinations that we like to have for dual wielding weapons and there are certainly a lot of unique combinations especially in halo 3 that you can come up with when it comes to the dual wielding feature a combo that comes to mind for me is like a plasma pistol and a magnum from halo 3 right so you use you charge with the plasma pistol so it's like a dual wielded noob combo in a way but of course you have the magnum from halo 3 which isn't exactly the most accurate and that eases the use weapon, but it's something you can play around with. And sometimes you can actually be really effective with it. Or you can do wield maulers and just feel like you have a regular sized shotgun, but in both hands. Pretty cool. This also plays into my third point, it's just the unique combinations you can come up with with dual wielding, that there's so many different variations, especially with Halo Infinite, which we have the UNSC weapons, which are going to be kinetic. Of course, we're going to have the banished weapons, which are most likely going to be plasma based, as well as forerunner weapons being thrown into the mix are going to be using the hard light. And so we've never had a game that's dual wielding involving hard light weapons. So a whole new realm of possibilities are there. Though there are a lot of cool and unique and fun ways to play around with dual wielding. Though it's not all sunshine and rainbows when it comes to this feature. So we're going to get into this next part. Here I want to talk about the negatives when it comes to dual wielding within Halo. From my experience, and I've seen many people within the community feel the same way as well, that a dual wieldable weapon by itself feels rather weak and very ineffective. We can use weapons like the SMG compared to Halo 2 and Halo 3, for example. What an SMG by itself? Not that great, and more just kind of a way to just soften somebody up to get a melee kill. But two SMGs, you can kind of hold your own at close range, but it just never really felt like I was a force to be reckoned with with dual SMGs. With the short range, low low damage and high spread, it just never really felt like that much of a power trip when it came to dual wielding weapons. It, it looks like it would be, but it doesn't really feel like that. And we saw the SMG come back in Halo 5 without it being able to be dual wieldable, though it still was very effective within its range where it was kind of like that middle ground between the shotgun, which is really good at close range, terrible at long range, and the AR, which is much better at mid range, but not the best at close range. The SMG really fit its role very well. Where when I picked up an SMG in Halo 5, I felt like I had an advantage at closer ranges compared to like say Halo 2 or Halo 3, where I'm like, no matter what situation I'm in, I need to really outthink my opponent to make it really work. From my 20 years of experience playing Halo, I've never felt more powerful while dual wielding weapons. I've always felt like I'm trying to make the best of a bad situation. 
That shouldn't really be the case when you're dual wielding weapons, I feel. Now that also could be an effect because precision weapons have always been the meta when it comes to Halo sandboxes. Traditionally, I have a feeling that Halo Infinite might follow in the same footsteps. Though Halo 5 certainly did a great job of trying to mix in more viable weapons, I'd say probably out of a lot of the Halo games, Halo 5 sandbox is probably the most viable, maybe not the so diverse because everything was really good at killing in that game, though a lot of weapons were good at killing in that game, which is ultimately what you need to do. So while not the most diverse in gameplay mechanics, it certainly was the most diverse I'd say in lethality. So this potentially has an effect on the weapon itself where it affects the weapon's uniqueness and creativity allowed as it is a singular weapon as you have to take into account that it can be paired with a bunch of other kind of dual wieldable weapons which could potentially be overpowered or break the sandbox especially with the introduction of new weapons which we'll get into a little bit later in this video now halo 2 and halo 3 didn't really have the issue where dual wielding weapons felt overpowered or game breaking really Though, that's because many of the dual wieldable weapons are, were very weak by themselves and only were viable when dual wield. And even then, they just more like kind of kept up with a lot of other singular weapons rather than being like a true powerhouse up close in front. And for this last section, I want to go into possible balancing or a path moving forward to possibly have dual wielding work within Halo Infinite. Now, we don't know the full extent of the sandbox and how unique some weapons might play out as. But I reached out to you guys in the community for some feedback and this is what you guys had to say. And one common point I saw come up a lot of times saying have it just be like a custom game option and just a campaign option but maybe just leave it out of multiplayer. If you're gonna have it in multiplayer have it a special like dual wielding kind of playlist which we've had right now within MCC. In which if you're worried about balance within multiplayer that's one way to get around it though I do feel that the dual wielding playlist would be highly underutilized by the player base at launch. I feel like there would be a bit of continuity issues for your casual player to jump in and play right like say you have a handgun that's available in campaign that you can dual wield but you come across that same handgun in multiplayer and you can't dual wield it. Well why is that? Well just because. Personally I feel that you need to have a player's ability within almost any mode of the game to basically be the same throughout to have that continuity of player ability and being able to pick up weapons I feel is such a core aspect of how the gameplay works within Halo to mess with that or have it play out different in different aspects of the game I just don't necessarily agree with. I mean that'd be like having sprint and campaign but not in multiplayer in my opinion. Another interesting comment I saw from Spartan51 said make them individually strong but on each side of the map. So if you get two and do wield then it's a power weapon. This is certainly an interesting take I haven't heard before. Uh, it sounds like it would work right where if you come across that rare instance where you're able to do wield it that would be really cool but I feel like Having a cross the map, which normally spawns are completely across the map from each other, so unlikely I feel that you'd be able to grab both weapons at the same time to truly be able to experience it. Like I feel like being able to pick up dual wielding weapons that are on opposite sides of the map would be more rare than finding like the sniper rifle or rockets in a level 50 like hardcore match where everyone's thirsting for it. But hey, maybe the grapple shot could make something like that work. I don't know. Now I saw another really interesting comment talking about Ruby's rebalancing mod. If you guys don't know about that, Ruby of Blue is a YouTube content creator who's been really famous for his rebalancing mods. I've just completely reworked the sandboxes of each Halo game to make it more functional or maybe just interesting and more dynamic to play around with which he's done a fantastic job with with what he's been able to work with and he came up with a rather interesting compromise for dual wielding in Halo 3 and I think it leave it up to him to say it best. Dual wielding introduced in Halo 2 was a fantastic concept allowing you to carry two weapons at a time and mix and match to experiment with different combinations and while it wasn't implemented ideally the mechanic didn't become problematic until Halo 3 where it received two big nerfs. The first of which is, several weapons had a notable debuff to their damage when dual wielded, which kinda defeats the point of the mechanic, don't you think? And second is that, well, in Halo 2, only firing one weapon at a time uses that weapon's single fire accuracy. You would only receive an accuracy penalty when firing both weapons at the same time. In Halo 3, that accuracy penalty is always in place, regardless of single or dual firing, which I think really removed some of the potential death from the mechanic. So basically, weapons were initially nerfed to account for the fact that you could carry two of them at a time, but then they also nerfed
nerf them further when dual wielded so it's just a lose-lose all around. This only further contributed to the redundancy of these weapons on Legendary being overshadowed by the headshot weapons. So my philosophy with dual wielding was designing every dual wieldable weapon around being single wielded, viable and useful in their role on their own. Then removing the constant dual firing accuracy penalty along with the damage debuff and giving a much greater accuracy penalty when dual firing instead. The point being, dual wielding should be an optional mechanic you can employ as an advanced tactic trading your melee grenades reload time and accuracy for doubled firepower. But with Halo 2's style of firing accuracy re-implemented, there's more depth in how you can use your two weapons. Choosing to only single fire alternating between your two weapons, or firing them both come hell or high water enduring the accuracy penalty. So now you can have more fun mixing and matching the weapons without feeling like you're having arbitrary restrictions placed upon you. The funny thing is, I didn't really know many of the aspects that he mentioned within that video. Though, doesn't that kind of show the flaw of how unintuitive dual wielding can be in classic Halo? Like I said, Ruby does a great job with the tools he has to work with and is rather fair compromised within Halo 3 sandbox. So, tweaking accuracy and damage is a simple fix in campaign, but would that work in multiplayer? Also, Halo 3 weapons were designed with dual wielding in mind, while Halo Infinite's sandbox can focus on having more weapons do more unique things and have different attributes besides just damage potential. As we know, the Ravager has changed since the gameplay demo from a damage dealing burst rifle kind of plasma weapon to more of an area of an effect and or area of a denial kind of weapon. We may see other unique functionalities like this with some other weapons or new weapons that are going to be in Halo Infinite. Like the armament blaster that we've seen in recent toy reveals, how's that weapon function within the sandbox? No one really knows. And I feel like the only way for Ruby's mod to really kind of work with, say, within Halo Infinite would be to have a dynamic reticle that we've seen in previous Halo games, where basically as you fire, it expands out to showcase like what the cone of radius of your fire is right at that moment. Which could be something that they could work with, but again, like since it doesn't really tell you, or there's no way to really tell you within the game, how that mechanic really works out besides showing that case in that bloom, I feel like it wouldn't be super easy to understand for people who just play the game. Another common thing I hear about saying balance weapons so they perform well in single, but then in dual wield they lower the damage output or decrease the accuracy, kind of what we touched on previously here with Ruby, and saying that it kind of just makes dual wielding irrelevant really at that point because what you're doing is trying to make your weapon more powerful, your setup more powerful, but then you do these decreases and nerfs to make it kind of just negligible to dual wield, which Kind of what happened in Halo 3. I feel like this dual wielding feature could only really work with the current ideals that 343 has within the sandbox of no dual wielding is to create a weapon that's specifically made for dual wielding. So no other combinations are possible and can still tune the dual wielding weapons specifically to the role without worrying about balancing of combinations with different weapons. This example from Modern Warfare 2 comes to my mind, talking about where you can have akimbo attachments for your pistols. Oh, and I certainly remember being an intervention sniper with having epic akimbo raficas as my secondary. And say I switch out those raficas for another weapon on the ground, and I drop the akimbo pistols. Now those akimbo pistols can only be picked up as akimbo, not individually. If Halo Infinite was really messing with dual wielding, this could be one way they could make it work. But how do you feel about dual wielding in Halo and possibly ever in Halo Infinite? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you guys missed any content from me recently or been out of the loop of Halo for the last few days or so, check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.